जय हिंद स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल स्टूडेंट्स यू नीड टू पुश योर सेल्फ टूवर्ड्स एक्सलेंस एज नो वन एल्स इज गोइंग टू डू इट फॉर यू सो यू योर सेल्फ नीड टू पुश योर सेल्फ टूवर्ड्स अचीविंग एक्सलेंस सो विद दैट स्टूडेंट्स लेट्स बिगिन दिस सेशन इन दिस पर्टिकुलर एपिसोड वे विल बी डिस्कसिंग सम न्यूमरिकल्स बेस्ड ऑन एम्पियर सर्कट इन लॉ In the previous lecture, we have discussed the applications of Ampere circuit law. We have obtained the expression for the magnetic field due to a current carrying long straight solenoid. Then we have obtained expression for the magnetic field at a point due to a toroidal solenoid, isn't it? And lastly, we have also obtained magnetic field at a point due to a thick current carrying conductor, all by applying Ampere circuit law. So now it's turn. to apply those theoretical concepts in solving these numericals right so let's proceed students let's concentrate on question number 1 it's a question based on toroidal solenoid a toroid has a core of inner radius 20 cm and outer radius 22 cm around which 4200 turns are wound if current of 10 ampere is flowing through the toroid then we are supposed to determine the magnetic field at outside the toroid inside the toroid and in the empty space surrounded by the toroid now the toroid means it's an anchor ring isn't it over which number of turns of copper wire or conducting wire is wound so this is known as a toroidal solenoid so here we are aware magnetic field is zero here we are aware magnetic field is zero so magnetic field has remained confined within this solenoid so it is within the solenoid that magnetic field will exist and magnetic field lines within the solenoid are almost parallel so magnetic field within the solenoid is constant isn't it so students outside the toroid b outside magnetic field is zero isn't it then inside the toroid that we are going to find and in the empty space surrounded by the toroid so first part is zero and third this is the empty space surrounded by the toroid so this is the empty space surrounded by the toroid uh, we are talking about this particular space here also the magnetic field is zero why it is because the magnetic field lines remain confined within the current carrying solenoid right so we are left with only the second part magnetic field inside the toroid now the formula for the magnetic field inside the current carrying toroidal solenoid is n mu not i and students you must remember n is the number of turns per unit length here length would be the circumference of the toroid isn't it so capital n divided by 2 pi r and in case students inner and outer radii are given then this is the mean radius right and mean radius it will be equal to ri plus r not divided by 2 let's get the value inner radius is given to be 20 outer radius is given to be 22 so it will be equal to 21 cm so radius is obtained number of turns it's given to be 4200 so let's substitute the value and get the result so inside the toroid the magnetic field is n is capital n divided by 2 pi r mu no i right so capital n it's 4200 let's solve it 2 pi r is the mean radius that is 21 cm don't forget to convert it in si 21 into 10 to minus 2 meter mu no we are aware of its value it's 4 pi into 10 to minus 7 it's si then current current flowing through the toroid is given to be 10 ampere so multiplied by 10 okay let's solve it 2 pi and over here will be left with 2 21 to 42 is a bit strange okay so what we get is 2 into 2 that is 4 multiplied by 10 to 3 and 10 to minus 7 so 10 to minus 4 into 10 to the power 2. So what you get is 4 into 10 to the power minus 2 tesla or 0.04 tesla. So students, this is the magnetic field inside the toroidal solenoid, and 
in the empty space surrounded by the solenoid and outside the toroid in both the cases the magnetic field is zero magnetic field in the case of toroidal solenoid remains confined only within the solenoid right and the magnetic field within the solenoid is 0.04 tesla so students we have worked with question number one so it was based on straightforward direct formula let's proceed to the question number second okay question number second is a 0.5 long meter long solenoid has 500 turns and flux density of 2.4 pi into tensile minus 3 tesla at its center determine the current flowing through the solenoid right okay here students flux density this term may confuse you but whenever you encounter some term which you are uncertain of right do note down its unit so the unit of flux density is tesla so actually flux density is nothing but it is the strength of the magnetic field so the strength of the magnetic field or the intensity of the magnetic field that is also known as flux density so magnetic field is given to be magnetic field is given to be 2.4 pi into 10 to the power minus 3 tesla right length of the solenoid is given to be 0.5 meter and number of turns is given to be 500 we are supposed to determine the current flowing through it it's the case of a straight solenoid so students in the case of a long straight solenoid the magnetic field at a point inside the current carrying solenoid is given by n mu naught i over here n is the number of turns per unit length isn't it so let's substitute this value so b would be equal to n by l mu naught i so b is 2.4 pi into 10 to the power minus 3 number of turns is 500 length it's 0.5 mu naught it is 4 pi into 10 to the minus 7 and the value of current is to be determined the current is to be determined which is flowing through the solenoid right so let's try to solve it pi pi gets cancelled so what do we get point one zero will come over here so it will be 1000 isn't it so in the right hand side we will be left with 4 into 10 raised to power minus 4 pi isn't it 10 to minus 7 multiplied by 10 to the power 3 so that will give us 10 to minus 4 over here we will be left with 2.4 into 10 to the minus 3 therefore current i would be 2.4 multiplied by 10 to the minus 3 divided by 4 into 10 to the minus 4 so it will be 2.4 into 10 divided by 4 am I clear students so which in turn this becomes 10 as 10 to minus 4 it will become 10 to 4 10 to 4 into 10 to minus 3 that will give us 10 so 2.4 multiplied by 10 that will give us 24 by 4 which will be equal to 6 ampere correct students so in this question as for the given condition the current which must be flowing through the current carrying solenoid is 6 ampere Right students? So this was the second question again based on direct formula, right? Let's proceed with the next question, third one. Third question is again the case of a solenoid. A solenoid is 2 meter long and 3 centimeter in diameter. It has 5 layers of winding of 1000 turns each and carries current of 5 ampere we are supposed to determine the magnetic field at the center as well as at the end points right so this is an interesting question ok length is given to be squares 2 meter and diameter it's given to be 3 centimeter and it has got 5 layers of 1000 turns 5 layers of 1000 tons the situation is like this this is a solenoid this is the first layer suppose this is the first layer right containing 1000 tons 
and then it will have second layer again containing 1000 ton then again it will have third layer containing 1000 tons then again fourth layer having 1000 tons and finally again fifth layer again containing 5000 tons so total number of tons would be number of layers multiplied by number of tons in each layer so the total number of tons it would be equal to 5 multiplied by 1000 which will be 5000 right this is the total number of turns in the solvent. So, current is given to be 5 ampere. Let us concentrate on the first part. We are aware students, as the current is made to pass through it, one end will behave as south, the other one end of the solenoid will behave as north. So, the magnetic field lines inside the solenoid are almost straight and parallel. So, inside, inside, the magnetic field is constant, isn't it? And inside the current carrying solenoid, the magnetic field is given by n mu naught i, right? Small n, it's the total number of turns per unit length. So, B center, it would be equal to capital N divided by L mu naught i. So, let's substitute the values. N is, it's given to be 5000. Length is given to be 2 meter. Mu naught, it's given to be 4.10 to minus 7. Remember students, mu naught is the absolute permeability of free space, right? It is the characteristic of the medium under consideration. Medium of what? Medium line in between the solenoid, right? And its value in the case of air or vacuum is 4 pi into 10 to minus 7 tesla meter per ampere. That's its SI unit. Multiplied by current. Current is given to be 5. Okay, we can easily solve it. So this becomes 2, 2 pi, right? So it will be 5, 5, 25, 25, 2, 50 pi into 10 to 3 into 10 to minus 7. That will give us 10 to minus 4 or 5 pi into 10 to the power minus 3 tesla. Clear students? So, this is the net magnetic field at the center. You can solve it further. You can write it like this also. 5 into 3.14 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 3 tesla. That will give us 5.2002. into 10 to the power minus 3 tesla. Clear students? This is the magnetic field at the center of this current carrying solenoid. Right? Okay. Now what we are supposed to do is we are supposed to determine the magnetic field at the end points. So in order to find out the uh, answer of the second part we will directly make use of the result. We know that at the end points students at the end points at the end points always remember the strength of the magnetic field is equal to half the strength of the magnetic field at the center so what I mean to say is that B N it would be equal to half the strength of the magnetic field at the center of the current carrying solenoid. so what we will get is half multiplied by 15.7 into 10 to the minus 3 tesla. So what we get is 7.85 into 10 to the minus 3 tesla. So this is the answer of the second part. Clear students? I hope you have understood the concept. And over here, just outside the current carrying solvent, although it's not asked in the question, but still, in case if we are supposed to find out the magnetic field just outside the current carrying straight solenoid over here in these two regions, the magnetic field would have been zero. Clear students? So we are over with question number three as well. Now let's proceed to question number four. Then. Question number four is. A current of 10 ampere is flowing through 
a thick wire of radius 10 cm. Find out the magnetic field at a point on the axis of the wire, on the surface and at a point which is at a distance of 20 cm from the axis of the current carrying conductor. Right? Students, if you remember, it is the third application of Ampere circuit law. We have determined the magnetic field at different points due to a thick current carrying conductor, isn't it? Then we have discussed the uh, variation graphically, the variation of magnetic field with distance r from the axis of the conductor, right? We are aware of the results. So while solving this numerical, we will be directly using those theoretical concepts, right? So fourth portion. Okay, it's the case of a thick wire like this. I told you, I mean the current over here is obviously the DC current. And it is the current which flows throughout the body, throughout the material of the conductor, right? So this is a thick conductor and this is the axis. This is the axis and its radius is given to be 10 centimeter. Say it to be capital R, it is given to be 10 centimeter and this is the axis. This is the axis. Now let's consider on the first part students. Find out the magnetic field at a point on the axis of the current carrying conductor. This we are aware students, magnetic field at a point on the axis is always zero. This we have mathematically proved. So here we are supposed to make use of the results directly. Right? So at any point on the axis of a current carrying conductor, the magnetic field is zero. No doubt regarding that. Okay. On the surface, okay, this is the point on the surface. On the surface, the magnetic field is maximum, right? So, magnetic field on the surface is maximum. And what is its formula? Mu naught I divided by 2 pi capital R. Capital R is the distance of the point on the surface from the axis, right? So, what we get? Mu naught is 4 pi into 10 is from minus 7. The current flowing through the straight thick conductor is 10 divided by 2 pi and this distance r it is 10 centimeter. So 10 into 10 is from minus 2. Don't forget to convert it in SI units, right? So 2 pi we will be left with 2, 10 10 get cancelled. So 2 into 10 is from minus 7 into 10 is from 2. So that will give us 2 into 10 is to power minus 5 Tesla. This is the maximum value of magnetic field due to this current carrying conductor. So at which point the magnetic field due to current carrying conductor is maximum? Yes, at a point on the surface of the current carrying conductor, the magnetic field is maximum, right? So its numerical value in this particular portion is 2 into 10 to minus 5 tesla. Okay, third part. We are supposed to find out the magnetic field at a distance of 20 cm from the axis of the current carrying conductor. 20 cm, somewhere over here. This is the observation point and this is R. Right? As we are aware, when smaller is greater than capital R, then what happens is magnetic field is inversely proportional to the distance of the observation point from the axis. So magnetic field starts decreasing with the increase in the distance of the observation point from the axis outside the conductor, right? So here outside the formula is mu naught i divided by 2 pi r. r is this distance. Right? So, let's solve it. So, it will be mu naught 4 pi into 10 to the minus 7. Current is 10 ampere. 2 pi distance of this observation point from the axis is 20 centimeter. It's given to be 20. So, 20 into 10 to the minus 2. So, you can solve it. It will be 2. So, what we get is 2 into 10 to the minus 7 into 10 into 10 to the power 2 divided by 20, right? So this does get cancelled, 2 to get cancelled, so we are left with 10 raised to the power minus 5 
this law. This is the axis rules. Clear? So, I must remind you very very important fact. At a point on the axis, the magnetic field is zero. As we start moving towards the surface of the conductor, the magnetic field increases and it is directly proportional to the distance r. So, between point 0 and a point of the surface, magnetic field varies with distance as directly proportional to r. And outside the conductor, the magnetic field will be inversely proportional to the distance of the oscillation point from the axis. Clear? So, these are the results of those three parts. So students, we are over with question number 4 as well. Right? So, in case, in the same question, uh, I will put another part in this particular question. Suppose, in the same question, question number 4, you are supposed to find out the magnetic field at a distance 5 cm from the axis. That is somewhere over here. So, fourth part. When small r is less than capital R. Here, magnetic field is directly proportional to small r. So, at any point inside the thick current carrying conductor, magnetic field is directly proportional to the distance of the observation point from the axis of the conductor. And students, inside the magnetic field is given by mu naught i smaller divided by 2 pi capital R square. This is the formula which we use to determine the magnetic field at any point such that small r is less than capital R. Right? So, let's find out the value. Mu naught is 4 pi into 10 is to minus 7. Current is 10 ampere. Small r. Small r, this distance is 5 centimeters. So 5 into 10 is to minus 2 divided by 2 pi into radius of the thick conductor. It's given to be 10 centimeter. So it is 10 into 10 is to minus 2 meter and square root. Clear students? Okay. Let's try to solve it. 2 pi will be left with 2. So let's solve it. What we get is 2 into 10 is to minus 7 into 15 into 10 to minus 2 divided by it will be 10 to minus 2. 10 into 10 to minus 2, it will give us 10 to minus 1 to the power 2. That will give us 10 to minus 2, right? This does get cancelled. So it will be 100 into 10 to minus 7. So it will be equal to 10 to power minus 5 Tesla, right? So the magnetic field at a point which is at a distance of 5 cm from the axis is 10 to power minus 5 Tesla. So students, again I repeat, the conclusion is, the magnetic field at any point on the axis of a thick current carrying conductor is always zero, as the distance is increased from the axis till the surface, the magnetic field keeps on increasing, it is linearly dependent with the distance smaller. At the surface, it is maximum, and beyond that, if smaller is greater than capital R, Outside the current carrying conductor, magnetic field starts decreasing as it varies with the distance r as 1 by r. Right? So, the graph which represents the variation of magnetic field with distance small r as, suppose this is any point on the axis, and let us consider this to be a point on the surface. So, at a point on the surface, the magnetic field is maximum. Right? This will be maximum. And from the axis to the surface, magnetic field varies with R as directly proportional to R. And after that, outside the current carrying conductor, magnetic field is inversely proportional to R. So the graph would be like this. This is inversely proportional to R. So students, I hope you understood this concept. Isn't it? So students, as... I always keep on telling you, practice more and more numericals so as to gain that confidence, right? So that's it for this particular session. Do join me in my next lecture. Till then, goodbye and do take very good care of yourself. Thank you.